Hi guys and welcome to another Windows tutorial. Today we're going to look at installing Routing and Remote Access on Windows Server 2008. Before we get started, you'll need a server running Windows Server 2008 and you'll also need, if I show you quickly here, two network cards. I've labelled mine here, Internet and LAN. So what we're going to do is install Routing and Remote Access and we're going to set it up so that it routes internet into our network and also lets us um, VPN into our network as well from the outside. So to get started, what you need to do is open the server manager and then go to roles and click add roles. Now click on network policy and access services and click next. Click next again. Now you want to choose routing and remote access services. Click next and click install. OK, now it's finished installing, click Close. And you'll see here it's got a red X over it, that's to let us know that it's not configured yet. Close the Server Manager and click Start, Administrative Tools and find Routing Remote Access. So you'll see you're greeted with this page that gives you a little brief overview about routing remote access. And also you'll see on the left hand side here <laughs> that um, you've got your server name with a little red down arrow to say that the server is not configured or it's just down. What we need to do now is configure the server by right clicking on the name and click configure and enable routing and remote access. On this first page, click Next. Now we need to tell Routing Remote Access what we want it to do. So what we want to do now is ask it to be a VPN and NAT server or Network Address Translation. So we want to tick, we want to select this box, Virtual Private Network, VPN, and access and NAT network address translation. And we read the text below it, it says allow remote clients to connect to this server through the internet and local clients to connect to the internet using a single public IP address. So that basically means that we're going to feed our internet connection into the server as you would your router at home and then the server will deal with giving all the other computers inside the network internet access. OK, so click Next to continue. Tell um, Routing Remote Access which interface connects to the internet. For me, it's the one labelled Internet, but also it has a different IP address to the internal network, because you'll see here the external network has an IP address of 192.168.0, and obviously a number. That's my phone. <laughs> And the internal network has a IP address subnet of 10.16.1 or whatever. So I've chosen my internet connection and I'm going to click next. Now it's going to ask you how you want to assign IP addresses to people that VPN into your server. I'm going to choose automatically, which means that it's going to use my DHCP server on my network. And I'm going to show you how to set that up as well when we're done. So choose automatically and click next. Now it's going to ask you if you want to use RADIUS or remote authentication dial-in user service. We're going to say no. Use routing and remote access to authenticate 
connection requests. Click next and click finish. Right, now it's going to remind us that to support um, giving out IP addresses to people with VPN in, we need to set up a DHCP relay agent. So click OK and give routing remote access moment to start. And click, oh, no, don't click finish, it's already there, it's already done. Alright, okay, so expand out your server and expand IPv4, and you'll see here DHCP relay agent. Right click on that and go to properties. Now type in the IP address of your DHCP server. When you've done that, click Add, Apply, and OK. So now you've done that, that means that people who dial in to our network using a VPN connection will get an IP address so they can access the network. Right, so the next thing we need to do is tell our DHCP server to give out the IP address for our new routing remote access server. So when you give your DHCP server this address, it will be the external address, which for me, LAN, is details 10.16.1.253. So I'm now going to jump over to my DHCP server. I'm going to go to Start, Administrative Tools, and DHCP. So now what I'm going to do is expand out my server name and expand IP version 4, and then click on Scope. You'll see here you have Scope Options. Double click on that, and right click on a blank space on the page and click configure options. What we want to do is configure a router which will be our routing remote access so we just set up. So click router. You can either type the server name or you can type the IP address. I'm going to type the server name because it's easier for me. Right, resolve. It's got the right IP address. Add. Apply and OK. So this now means that when our client PCs inside the network get an IP address, they'll also now get the IP address of our routing and remote access server. Although for this to, take, for this to happen, what you need to do on the client computers is do the following command ipconfig release and then ipconfig renew or alternatively you could just reboot the computer okay one other thing I'm going to show you, to, show you how to do before I go is port forward on this routing and remote access server so what you do is you go down to NAT and you right click on your internet connection and you go properties and you go here to services and ports now I need to enable a few on here so I'm going to enable FTP and if, it's, if the um, service you want to enable for port forwarding is on the box you're on for, so for me it's my FTP servers on this routing, routing server as well you put 127 Zero, zero, 001 and OK. I also, my phone again, sorry. I also need to enable SMTP for my exchange server. So that's 10, 16, 1, 2, 
and also pop free. HTTPS. What am I doing? Ten, sixteen, one, two, five, two. Sure, yeah, okay. <laughs> and what else do I need to enable here? Um, web server. And if you want to add your own service, what you can do is click add, put a description. Say whether you want it to be TCP or UDP, put in the incoming port, the private address, and the outgoing address. And obviously make sure it's ticked. Right, so we've port forwarded, we set up routing remote access. And we've set up our DHCP server to give out the IP address of this routing remote access server. So I think that's it, guys. If you have any questions, obviously leave me a comment and I will try my best to help you. Um, but that's it for this tutorial and look out for more coming very soon.